Good, beautiful bog morning. This is an episode I'm calling Three Owls, a Wolf, and an Ermine. And uh, now I guess I gotta add Bobcat, because I just had a Bobcat. And an update. I now have to add two more owl species and a mink. Lots of wolf tracks. Yeah, I'd say that's a big wolf. Or a, at least a wolf with big feet. Three going west and three going east. So I got some distant, distant photos and video of um, the back of a sitting bobcat. Yeah, amazing. I know you're jealous. It's a long ways down the road. Long ways. <laughs> Just sitting there listening for rabbits, for snowshoe hares. Fun to see. This time of year, bobcats often come out of the woods a little more. The snow is really deep. They're not as suited to this as lynx. Yeah, we're just gonna kind of go over some of the highlights of the last few weeks. And it is a gorgeous day. We just got like 12, 15 inches of snow and a three day storm over President's Day weekend. And now the sun has come out and I'm ready to do a little snowshoeing. Let's, uh, yeah, see if we can find things off the road, do a little bushwhacking. All right, ready? Let's go. We're at Yellow Belly Bog, and the feeders are super active. It is slightly below zero. Beautiful day for a snowshoe. I wanna see what we can find in the back country. We all bird along the roads, for sure. What kind of birds might we find back in the bush? Well, we're gonna try. Give it a shot. This is the way the old timers did it, with lamp wick. Real simple way to lash your feet to your snowshoes. And it never freezes, so your knots never get stuck. Super flexible, super quiet. I've got a Canada Jay. I don't know if you can see him at the top of that spruce there. And there's a pair of them. And that's one of the things I was looking for because they are building nests right now. Yeah, hard to believe. I would love to find a Canada Jay nest. I give rewards if anybody can point me to a Canada Jay nest, but they'll be on eggs by mid-March. So I'm here at Yellow Belly Bog and this is a great place to look for gray jay nest. Canada jay, sorry, Canada jay nest. Oh, they love this stunted, and they build these big bulky nests and they line them with deer hair and moose hair so they're nice and warm. Because it can be well below zero and there will be this year still three feet of snow in the woods. We're gonna search, we're gonna keep looking. Oh, there's the mate right there. And I have a little surprise for you. Thanks to a generous gift from Jose Arrieta, we're gonna have a trail, a nice trail and a spur boardwalk out into this taiga, the stunted spruce open area. It should be kind of interesting. In summer, it attracts a different kind of bird than you'd find in the big towering black spruce and tamarack, which is on a little drier sites. This is wetter, so the trees are stunted. They may be just as old, but things like yellow-bellied flycatcher, the namesake for this bog, Lincoln sparrow, palm warbler, they all love this kind of open habitat. So it could be nice to have a little spur boardwalk so you can get out in it and appreciate it. And to those of you who think pine grosbeaks are the sweetest birds in the world, watch this. Yeah, that's how you get rid of a red pole off your feeding tray. Just stomp on it. It was a really cold morning along Stone Lake Road when I rolled up on this great gray. And look at that, you'll see in some of this video how 
that little white bow tie, even in this shot, can be seen in the dimmest of light conditions. And this experience reminded me of, yeah, a little etiquette reminder when watching Great Grey Owls. I saw it quite a ways ahead of me, and I stopped about 100, 150 yards before the owl. Stopped, got out, watched it, and it was not nervous. So that's great, because the whole goal is not to alter the natural behavior of any of the, the critters we see in the Saxembog. And I get it. The temptation is you spot a great gray right next to your car to slam on the brakes and get those just very close photos. But eight times out of ten, if you do that, they're just going to fly away. And we've ruined it for ourselves, for the owl, and for others. So if you're the first one on the scene, stop at least 100 yards away, watch it, enjoy their behavior, and then if you can tell they're just calm and just doing their thing, then you can approach closer. Is it possible to be alone with a great gray owl in the Saxon bog anymore? Absolutely. Got one right here. We're keeping a safe distance so we don't alter its behavior. Just waiting and watching. There's all kinds of roads marked on our map that are good for great grays, or they're marked good in winter. And almost any stretch with black spruce and tamarack bog, you can find a great gray. Gotta get out early. I was here about a half hour before sunrise. And that's uh, one of the keys. Let's check in on him, see what he's doing now. And I know this video looks like I was really close, but with the 500 millimeter lens, a 2X extender, and shooting an 8K video, I can crop way in. So it looks like I'm far closer than I was. He's right on top of that birch snag. Let's see if you can see. There he is, actively hunting. And if I zoom out, you can see we're a fair ways away and I uh, can tell we're not disturbing him. Well, we've spent quite a bit of time with this great gray. Haven't disturbed him. He hasn't caught anything either. So we're gonna let him be and move on. See what else we can find. And my toes and fingers are freezing. So I gotta go thaw them out. I'm now heading to the Welcome Center and this is a good time to let you know that by the time you're watching this, the season is about done. We close for the winter on Sunday, March 13th. And you might be asking yourself, why in the world would you close? It still looks like midwinter in the bog. Well, it might look like that, but the birds go by daylight length. And by the time you see this, the pine grosbeaks speaks have already vacated the bog, heading back to their Canadian boreal forest breeding grounds. And the owls will start getting busy with love and nesting. And the roads get really bad. So, yeah, good time to wrap it up for the season. Don't fret. We'll be back open for the summer, June 1st through August 31st. And thanks to Mark and Jason and Heather Marie, our Welcome Center naturalists and our volunteers for a great season. I am working the Welcome Center today. Something I only do a couple times a year, but it's fun visiting with folks. And boy, sounds like most people are having a great time. The boreal chickadees were very regular down at the end of Gray Jay Way here. People have seen um, Great Gray and uh, Northern Shrike and sharp-tailed grouse. It's always fantastic to see a group of young people enjoying the birds in the bog. And this group from Iowa State was having a blast. Point to Iowa. Ready, go. One, two, three. Where's Iowa? <laughs> Only one person knows. <laughs> All right, what was the favorite bird? Anybody, favorite bird you saw so far? I know you just got here. Sharp-tailed grouse. Sharp-tailed grouse that burrowed into the snow. Anybody else? What? Northern Shrike. 
Who got a, who got a life? I think almost all of us. Well, all of you, but <laughs> you're more impressive. You. How about boreal chickadee? Did you see boreal chickadee? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. What's wrong with boreal chickadees? Oh, awesome. I haven't yeah. gotten a good look at one yet. How about porcupine? Did you see porcupine? We did. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, guys, have a great trip. Sweet. How many visitors did we have today? Saturday, February 26th. Wait for it. 153 nature loving, bird loving, owl seeking, having fun groups, college groups. Yeah, having a great time at the Welcome Center today. I've just got to share this experience with you. I was coming to the bog, it was a little after sunrise. I was crossing the Cloquet River on 53, which of course is a 65 mile an hour road. When I looked to my right and saw a wolf crossing the river and going around a little open area of water and, you know, couldn't stop right then. I spun around. Got By the time I got back there, wolf was gone. I thought, well, maybe it's going to work its way down the river shore. So I, there's a parking ride there. I parked and I kind of hoofed it into the woods and no wolf and I thought well I'll pish I've never pished in a wolf before but hey you never know well guess what flew out at me yeah this beautiful barred owl well so hey didn't get uh, a great look at the wolf but I did get to spend some time with this barred owl so I'm sorry I didn't get a photo or video of the wolf but here is my artist rendering of the encounter did I say artist? And later that afternoon, ran across this snowy owl. Sac Zim is not known for snowy owls, but uh, seems like one shows up every year. Sometimes they don't stick very long, but this one is along seven, has been here maybe a couple weeks. And uh, they are also one of our vole snatchers. They eat voles mainly in the winter. In early February, I went out in the field with Iris Freeman and Warren Wussner. And yes, that's the Warren from the Warren Wussner Bog Boardwalk at the Warren Nelson Bog. And we had this really amazing encounter with uh, one of the great grays along County Road 7. And obligingly, it plunged down into the snow and pulled out a vole for us. So got to watch it actually plunge twice. We mainly see ermine at one of the rib cages that we put out at our different parcels in the bog. But occasionally, just occasionally, you'll see one when you're just driving around middle of nowhere. And that's what happened to me in mid-February. I just saw this white blur run across the road. And I, at first I was like, what was that? It was And then <laughs> I saw the little ermine and he would duck in and out of this root ball and he was very much hunting and then he'd pop down in a hole and then he'd come back somewhere else so it was just fun this went on for just a couple minutes but yeah just enjoyed the experience ermine is the winter name for the short-tailed weasel when it gets that nice white coat we change its name from short-tailed weasel to ermine and they are vole hunters. They get down in those burrows and they have that long skinny body that can get down in the vole burrows under the snow. And they are vicious predators of those little rodents. And 
here at Augie's Bog Walk and I hear some chickadees mobbing something and that usually means an owl or a marten. Wouldn't it be great if it was a boreal owl? Yeah, okay, we gotta go check it out. Of course it's off the trail. The snow is deep. I am literally up to my, almost my waist. <laughs> oh, keep going. And there it is. It is a barred owl. Just basking in the sun on a snag. Oh my gosh, perfect perch. Hairy woodpecker and black capped chickadee kind of mobbing it. But uh, this time of year they get hungry and hunt in the daytime, but this guy's got his eyes closed. But maybe he'll go over towards the feeders after dark where there's probably voles feeding on the sunflower seeds. Thank you, chickadees. You found me an owl. I'm gonna leave this guy alone. That's always our goal in wildlife photography and birding, is uh, leave the critters as you find them and hopefully not alter their behavior, their natural behavior. So yeah, let's get out of here. Make sure this guy is, he is back to sleep. <laughs> All right, that was fun. We've got mink tracks, and notice how the paw tracks are slightly offset, and that's common with a lot of our northern weasels. Woo! Frosty! It's like 15 below zero. <laughs> March, what is it, third? Cool mink tracks along the open stretches of the ditch. And after about 45 minutes, uh, out the mink came. This was very exciting for me since I've never had the best luck finding and photographing mink. The mink is a weasel. It's quite a bit bigger than an ermine slash short-tailed weasel and quite a bit smaller than a pine marten. But we consider it semi-aquatic. And as you can see in this video, this guy kept dipping into the the creek and looking for crayfish and fish. And then he did catch something. And I was here with Ron and John, and uh, yeah, they thought it was a little perch. So pretty cool. 
Ron and John have seen this mink try and pull out much bigger uh, fish like a northern and a sucker and then he took it down subnivian took it down below the snow level to eat it Well, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, one of the farms here, they called me up. They had a little owl, a saw wet owl at their feeders. And so they let me come and check it out. Watched him pounce twice, him, her, but uh, didn't get anything. The seeds fall off the bird feeder and into the snow and mice and voles take advantage of that and come up and get a little snack. And that's exactly what this saw what owl is waiting for. I am a little worried because it's feeding in the daytime and normally they mainly feed at night, but maybe that's when the voles are coming up. Fortunately, I did notice some blood on its bill when I was processing my photos so it must be getting some mice and I talked to the farm owner and they said yes they've seen it catch three different mice so yay all right but adorable world's cutest owl for sure and on March 7th I had to change the title of this virtually live again we've got our fifth species of owl for this video the northern hawk owl up there at the tip top of that deciduous tree. Yes, the long absent northern hawk owl that was around for a few days in December showed back up along County Road 7 just north of Saks Road. Yeah, so awesome. They are patient hunters. They can see a vole from probably a half mile away as it breaks the surface of the snow. I, I've seen them hunt like that. It's unbelievable. So they are a, a sight hunter, not a sound hunter. And uh, they're, they're, not a, they're not a night owl. Night owl. They are a true day owl. They hunt during the day. They get up, you know, not at the crack of dawn. Nah, not usually. <laughs> but they hunt all day long. This guy could be sitting here for hours and hours. I wonder if it's the same one that was here in December. Hmm. But Hannah, our bander who's doing research on hawk owls, has been alerted. Pretty cool. 